joining us. I'm going to let Pat take it over and uh, sit back and enjoy the presentation. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, two minutes after noon hour. Uh, here we are with Lunch and Learn again. And uh, you're welcome to eat while you're listening or have coffee or uh, whatever tripped your trigger there. Hey, we are so excited to have you join us. And uh, I've really been enjoying these our little talks. And uh, we are going to look at whether we can keep them up or not. Um, so as Stacy mentioned, they are available uh, on our website under the education tab the former ones we did, but we, we sure appreciate your support. If this is something you would like to do, uh, I've got a few more of these and we could sure come up with some more and then uh, other staff. We're gonna heading into our super busy time right now though with our, our plant sale and getting the garden opened up and getting the world opened up again. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but uh, we I've enjoyed being with you and uh, appreciate your support with the garden. While we, try and stay viable in this new kind of arrangement of things. So the talk today is called Contain Yourself, and I actually put this together in response to, I think it was AT&T went there to give a talk. People were so excited about doing containers, and it was early spring, and it was really too early to buy things and put it outside, so I just wanted them to slow down a little bit and think about it. Thus, it's contain yourself. So uh, it is about container gardening, which is something we do well in Alaska and, and uh, easy to do. And I'm gonna uh, take it on a little spin at the end and, and tell you some, some new trends and things. And I'm gonna give you the secret today to really easy containers. So uh, we're gonna start with uh, some slides of some containers actually from the Proven Winners website. And uh, so I hopefully be able to see these okay. And uh, these are actually pretty easy to plan. Now I'll, I'll show you the secret of there, there we go. So that first one was called New Attitude. And uh, they just have some clever names. And I can tell you what's in those uh, as we go along here, but let's, let's keep going. Just look at these quickly. This next one is called, as it comes up, Vintage Art. I don't know who comes up with these things. Okay. This is pretty funny. Plum Obvious. Yeah, really, these are so easy to plant, you guys. Okay. This one's called Fireworks. Really just three things in there, three different things, so not too tough. Here is... Orange Frost, got a little bit of grass in that one. Kind of cool looking thing. And the next one is? Sorry, Pat, there are people coming in late, so just oh, having to oh, manage, okay. manage a few things at once. Okay, this one's called Chick Flick Cherry. So we're just going through some slides of some uh, pre-made containers via the Proven Winner site, and I'm going to refer to them. This one's called Pure Genius. Again, really only three things in here, the grass and the maybe Caliber Coa is there and the Blackie Sweet Potato. Okay, this one's called Touch the Sky. Beautiful, I think there's only two things in there. This one is Free and Easy. Two things again, it looks like. Couple more. This one's called Glad All Over. Again, just two things in these containers that make them look really awesome. This one is Come Sail Away. And Lime Lava with that beautiful Lizamachia there. Three things in this one. Easy to do. Here's a planter from Bainbridge Island. Got some, uh, I think it's Selaginella is the little moss that's in its head there. Then we'll do uh, some close-ups of some things that are in containers. So there's a beautiful one of the, the coleus up on top, New Guinea impatience, the purple with the flowers there. Beautiful, it's in a pot in the garden, which you can move around as it looks good. Bring it to into the garden or to your deck or move around as it starts waning or needs some perking up, just move it away and bring in something else. There's another coleus, as some of you know, my, my addiction 
uh, Goliath's close up. Oh, love these guys. So easy to grow. Here's a Heuchera uh, close up from, uh, this could be a uh, one from Terra Nova. We talked to Dan Himes of Terra Nova Nurseries. He's pretty famous for breeding these guys. They're also known as coral bells or alum root. They come in all different colors now. Here is a lamium. Uh, I used to say lamium, but I learned back when I was teaching first grade from Spalding Phonics. Rule number four in Spalding Phonics says, a vowel says its own name at the end of a syllable, and that comes from Latin. So it is L-A-M-I-U-M, lay me um. And the uh, way to remember that is potato, po, te, to. It makes sense. So lamium and not lamium. I try and pronounce things correctly, but it's not that important. Little, little uh, language tip there for you. Uh, here's another heuchera, a close up. Look at that, beautiful. Uh, Dan has been working on these from Terra Nova and uh, not focusing on the flower so much as getting this foliage to be pretty spectacular. So there you go. Here's the Lizamachia or Golden Creeping Jenny. Uh, keep that one in mind for what we're going to look at later. This one's great in a container or hanging basket. And it is perennial here. You can pop it out at the end of the season if you have a container and uh, plant this one in the garden. It just lays there on the ground pretty low. I think it's great underneath uh, peonies, which have tall, skinny legs, and they need something kind of underneath them. So uh, a great perennial that works well for us here. Golden Creeping Jenny. Here's a hosta up close. Uh, I would mention these because they do work in containers. So we're talking a little bit about perennials in containers uh, right now. We're looking at some of those. Uh, these guys come in dwarf varieties too. I got to visit a um, hosta farm in Buffalo a couple years ago on a on a conference trip, and uh, the guy had actually written written the book literally on dwarf hostas, and they work so well in containers, and I think especially in hypertufa containers, which I'm I'm kind of a fan of too. If you've been to the garden, you've seen our hypertufa troughs with mostly alpine plants, but these guys work well too. Uh, so. Dwarf hosta is a, a fun thing to explore. Okay. Oh, there we go. Who likes their sedums and their succulents? And, uh, beautiful stuff. So, you know, what we say is all cacti are succulents, but not all succulents are cacti. So here's a, this was at a gardener show down in Arizona. Uh, just some troughs and trays. And actually they look like they would be something that could be uh, just a, a tray that catches the water. Like uh, you would have a series of pots in there, but these are planted right in the tray and they would be very happy there for a uh, pretty long time. So we're gonna look at a few of these different ones. Beautiful. Oh, look at that one. These guys do grow too. You, you plant uh, a few random things in there and they fill out and grow. And this kind of reminds me that uh, if you've never entered anything in the state fair, this might be a good time to start thinking about that. Now you have to have something in your possession for I believe 30 days. You can't just run over to the nursery the day before the fair, buy something and throw it in a container and enter it. You have to have some time with it. So you have time if you planted something like this to, to grow it up big and have it wonderfully ready for the fair and uh, $7 for a blue ribbon. So uh, you can make money out there too and it's fun. And I get to be a flower show judge out there. So look at this one, wow. Lots of hen and chicks there, beautiful. More, <laughs> a little bit of grass in this other one. Look at that, what a centerpiece that would make. Very nice. All right, here's a little bit with kids. These are hypertufa troughs we made at the Botanical Garden during the summer camp. Uh, kind of a, a thing that I have done with kids for a long time. And we do give classes on making these too. And I've been able to present at the Seattle Flower and Garden Show twice uh, last year and this year. This year I got to do two presentations. 
and I hope they'll let me come back. Uh, I might have to change it up a little bit, but uh, we can make one of these pretty easily. These are just being planted with whatever I had at the house and I could make cuttings of, you see the little burrow tail there and that, that front one and our ladybug rocks we have in there. looks like some spider plants and just anything that I could grab. This are kind of a low, low budget affair, uh, but kids don't care, kind of like a, a little fairy garden. So uh, this is something that we can offer again when uh, things get rolling again, our hypertufa class. We'll talk more about that. Here's Lillian, look at that little proud little thing. And uh, the tufa is, it is concrete, but it's uh, with peat moss and perlite. So it's a little bit lighter. It's not like it's just a heavy brick. It's, it has some porosity to it and uh, pretty light. And you can grow anything you want in there. Uh, I like say those dwarf hostas work well. Uh, any other things that are miniature succulents would work well. Um, in, in our garden, at the botanical garden, we do grow mostly alpine plants in there, things that live in high mountain regions. And that's a lot of uh, a fun kind of gardening too, rock gardening. So uh, you have to make a visit to the garden this year if you haven't seen our troughs. So here we go, here's the hardware part. Um, contain yourself. So you're looking for some nice containers. This is one on the left, the kind of maroon colored one, looks like a deck railing planter. It hooks on there. Uh, that's not going to blow off. Uh, pretty solid. The one below that on the left, a nice little container on legs. Um, we're going to talk a, a little bit about what's going in these, but kind of saving that. I love the horse trough in the middle. Those things are not cheap. And uh, unless you're really growing like potatoes or something in there, you really don't need to fill the whole thing with soil. A lot of times people put a false bottom in these, like a wooden, a wooden uh, frame that's raised up so it's only half full of soil. You're not gonna move that once it's planted, but I, I like the looks of those. I think they're kind of unique looking and plenty of room. Um, my driveway is the sunniest part of my yard most of the day and our cars are gone during the day. So I would love one, one couple of these on wheels that I could roll out into the driveway while we're gone during the day. They would get full sun and then roll them out of the way to uh, bring the cars in. But uh, a, a little bit cost prohibitive, maybe you could find a used one. The ones below that, just uh, some geraniums and petunias and pots and some kind of arrangement if you're a person who likes neatness and symmetry, uh, which has a place in the world and in gardening. I'm kind of the other end. I, a little bit of everything is fine with me, but uh, arranging different containers, uh, it's possible to paint them different colors too or go with a the theme. Uh, the one on the upper right, those are some nice planters that can be moved around or wouldn't be too light, but I will look at that a little bit too. And then a nice uh, kind of traditional hanging basket. And I can't tell if that's a moss basket or not, but we'll, we'll talk more about that too. Okay. So hardware includes pots and tools. The pots must have drainage. We've talked about this before. The, the simple first grade version is, what is the law for plants? We say light, air, and water. And we actually add an end to that lawn. Uh, for nutrients, but what is the law? You have to have drainage. You have to have water in, but also water has to get out. A lot of times you buy a nice pot and maybe you're gonna have it in your house, so you'll have another uh, pot in a pot, and then the in, inside pot will, will drain, uh, but the other one won't leak out. So it just depends, but if you're outdoors and, it, and we do get rain, those, if they don't have drainage, they can fill up, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit too. Uh, even the ones that, uh, uh, pots that have a tray, that has a little tray that's at the bottom, and you stick the pot on top of that tray, and there's little like buttons, little plugs that come up in there and hold the tray on there, but they also hold the water in too. So I have actually drowned plants before with that. So really drainage is important. Uh, with clay pots, some are glazed, uh, they're porous, they're good air circulation, they dry quickly. I think uh, they're classic and I think they look good. Uh, they can break 
and they do, and they crack during the winter sometimes if you leave them outside, but I think the clay pots are a really very attractive basic unit of container gardening. Plastic is pretty light. Uh, they can be a little expensive. They're doing different things with those, and some of them maybe don't look so good or have some strange colors. Uh, somebody gave me a, it's a, actually a ceramic uh, pot. It's pretty big, but it's orange. It just doesn't grab me, but it's, it's a nice pot. I guess I'll have to paint it. Uh, wood can be heavy and it will rot. Those thinking of those cedar uh, tubs, like not really the whiskey barrels. Those, those work pretty well. And I actually didn't mention those. Uh, I like the real ones with the big heavy metal band, not the little, uh, they're made of cedar and they're, they have slats that go together. It's not like a, a real whiskey barrel that, it, that's also slats, but those are big and solid and heavy. The other ones are pretty light. The banding is not real thick. It's only like an inch, inch thick. And those things will rot eventually and they fall apart. So not, not a huge fan of those. The paper pulp, really cheap. You might pick up a deal from a nursery in a pulp pot. And I'll show you a picture of those in a sec here. They dry very quickly. They're pretty light. Uh, so those have their use. Nurseries tend to use those because they're kind of on the cheap side and uh, easy if you're doing a, a big sale. You can throw some, some marigolds or something in there, strawberries, and uh, boom, get those out to the public pretty quickly. But they do dry pretty fast. Metal look great, uh, expensive, and they need drainage holes if they're going to be outside. Your tools would be your trowel, a small clippers for deadheading, and a watering can. Uh, the deadheading part is hugely important too with your containers. Keep them looking good. If your marigold dies, which they will, they're annuals, deadhead that thing and you'll probably get a second growth in a few weeks or a month or so, but uh, like with your fuchsias or fuchsia, uh, if you have hanging baskets for those, you gotta pull those little berries off every day. You get out there and they look like little hot dogs. Pull them off because that is the plant making seeds, which is its job, and then they're done flowering. So if you don't pinch those off, uh, deadhead your petunias and things, uh, they will give up. Like, like last year what happened with a lot of hanging baskets, it was a watering problem because you have to water almost every day and plants just seem like they accelerated their growth. I know ours did at, at our house. We do quite a few hanging baskets. And I, I like to kid my wife that our house is sinking. We have so many hanging baskets. Uh, she kind of takes care of that department. But things just grew really fast and, and were kind of spent before summer was over. So watering is going to be something to watch this year too and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up okay there's one of those peat pots and I'm sorry I didn't groom my chlorophytum before I took that picture so that's over the winter I do overwinter them in my greenhouse which is heated and it's expensive to heat um, it is triple wall polycarbonate but it, it's not completely airtight so uh, we do pay a price for that but in the spring it's heaven because I got all this green stuff ready to go. But that's a pulp pot there. And I just do a couple of these as like hanging baskets. And I, I think they look kind of nice. It's just a simple, cheap plant. If I was teaching our camp again, I would use these for uh, pulling off the little pups. Uh, it's called the airplane plant or a spider plant. I learned that in Mexico, it's called the bad mother plant because she sends her babies away from her. Uh, so easy to root, pop those off, stick them in water if you want to, and uh, grow the air roots out a little bit and then pot them up. So I think they look pretty good. But that's a, a pulp pot made from peat. This is our kind of our standard in Anchorage. Remember these used to be cedar and they would eventually fall apart. They, come, they were stapled together in the corners. Um, I don't know why somebody up here maybe doesn't start making ones. I think that would be probably a good business thing. But these are the plastic ones and they look like wood and they're not bad. And uh, again, this is in my greenhouse. So we have lots of these. <laughs> I gave away a bunch to the Moose Lodge last year and I still have quite a few. So that's, uh, that's kind of an Anchorage 
thing right there, the standard unit of measurement. Also the hanging baskets, uh, I think are, are an Alaskan garden style, um, an element of Alaska garden style because it's a short season. It looks like we got an extra month out of it here. It's not even May yet and look at this. Although it was like 25 last night in some parts of town and maybe even cooler. So you can't really put your plants outside yet, but we like color in our face right there. You walk out of your front door and boom, these guys are hanging right there or all around your house. Uh, fun way to go. Okay. So here's a moss basket and I have an interview with Ed Hume on Friday. He had made a comment in his book about the moss baskets, which we'll ask him about on Friday at noon for our interview. Um, I like these, I think they look good. Uh, you can um, buy the actual moss already formed, ready to go, uh, and just pop it in, in that uh, frame there. And also you can plant on the side. You can, this is what Bells does. You punch a hole in the side and plant your plant in there as you're adding soil up. You, you actually poke a hole in the side, have the soil to that level, carefully put your roots in there and then add uh, soil on top of that. The only thing about these that I think makes them difficult is uh, they're hard to rehang. Um, I have some uh, epiphyllum or it's a tropical ca uh, cactus it's uh if if you've been to bells on specking you walk in the garage door area it's that giant plant that's hanging there that's just going into bloom now i've had my different ones blooming i've got uh, a pink and white and a red and an orange and i've uh got a yellow cutting and i think we just ordered some more but they're 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 big huge things so uh they look cool in this um but the bad part is when it's big and heavy and full. I mean, this is as big as my arms can can make. And the one at Bell's is, you, you got to visit there if you've never seen that. It's awesome. The flowers are six inches across too. They're just, just huge, just amazing. But if I take this guy and I want to move it, which I do, I put everything outside and I get it off the hook in the greenhouse, then the chains collapse and I don't have anything to kind of hook it up with. So I'm taking it out and uh, hooking it up in my yard. I usually uh, put them on the lower branches of a large spruce tree, get them out of the sun because they'll fry. Uh, I did put a few plants out yesterday. They're up off the ground so they didn't freeze and they're not going to burn up in the sun. But this guy, if I go to lift up the heavy, heavy pot, the, the chain is just flopping down and hanging down there. So they're I prefer that you have something like a wire that holds it up better. So that's just been a difficult uh, thing when I'm moving my big tropical cactus. But I think they're nice looking pots, just uh, a little hard to move around, okay? I love these guys. It's a deck rail planter. I guess I should have found a picture of a darker color, kind of white on white there. I've got a couple of these uh, in gray and they're for two sizes, the, the upper little area that you see, that is for a four by, or a two by four deck railing, and the other part is for a two by six deck railing, that's what I have. And uh, so this fits right on the deck. Um, it's got a, a big trough right where, where the thing fits on the deck railing, so it's not very deep with soil right from I can't really point to that <laughs> there from uh, where where the recess is to the top of where your soil level is, but it's deep down in the side. It does go all the way down to the bottom there. So that's great for most things. Uh, make sure that there is drainage. I like these because even if we get a high wind, they don't blow off the deck. I've got uh, set out window boxes yesterday. I've already planted one with um, spinach. I've got some thyme seeded. They're not going to grow until they're ready, but they're fine. They're, they're in black tubs too, so they're warming up. And uh, I expect I'll see some spinach sprouts here fairly soon. But uh, this over the rail deck planting is great. And here's the drip system we definitely want to talk about. You know what? This is not that hard to do. Um, I don't use it in the ground, but I have rigged it up for our 
our hanging baskets in the front of the house. Although I don't mind hand watering, uh, sometimes it can be a, get a little wet, um, but you can visit with each plant that way and give them a really good soak. Uh, this guy too, you, you get these hooked up, you can rig up a uh, fertilizing uh, way to do it too. I have a big tub I use and put a pump in there and I pump it into uh, each basket, just like at Bell's. Again, look at the system in a, a typical nursery there. You can kind of look at what they arrangement what they have there. It, it's really not that hard to put together. If you've got a handy person around the house, easy to do. So I, I definitely look into something like that. You could do timers too. Now, these containers, they can be a little heavy. Uh, and so you want to maybe look at some things to move them around. This would not be for really sitting in your garden, but on a, a deck or a driveway uh, to move them around. So there are various forms of this, uh, good thing to look into. They're not, not that light to move. Here's another one that's cool, uh, adaptive tool. A couple people can pick up uh, bigger planters and things and move them around. It's a ceramic pot, so that's gonna be heavy but this little sling thing works pretty well. This uh, you can find in Tony Gatoni's book, and she was our first interview we did. So look that up and uh, you can find her book about adaptive gardening, and this is an easy way to move things around. Okay, here's the software. So uh, soil, I always say buy the best you can afford. Uh, the Gardener Supply one, I just borrowed their pictures, and uh, they do, with some restrictions, ship to Alaska. You can get it here, but I think you have to get the Alaska rate, but uh, it's kind of nice, and I, I guess Amazon would do the same thing to get something shipped to you, although we like to encourage you to shop locally, especially now. Um, but whatever you're able to do, sometimes you can't go to the store and schlep a big heavy bag of potting soil over your shoulder. I'm still able to do that, so that's good, but whatever works for you. The thing in the middle is the uh, cocoa, I, I used to say coir, but I found somewhere that said it was coir, C-O-I-R, which kind of makes sense. Um, it's the cocoa, coconut fiber. It's the the longer fibers, the shorter fibers are used in making those uh, welcome mats and things and insulation and other fibrous things. These guys were not really being used. And so it's the outer um, husk of the coconut shell. And uh, you get it in a brick usually, throw it in a five gallon bucket with some warm water and it puffs up to almost a full bucket of uh, a wonderful potting mix. I like it a lot. It it holds moisture, but it also drains, which is a critical thing too. So, you know, you can shop online, which I like to do, but then maybe head out locally uh, at whatever your comfort level is now to uh, see what's out there. Nice window box there in the picture. Was, sorry, it was a picture that I borrowed. It was a little compressed, so if it looks kind of squishy. That was my fault. <laughs> Window boxes are nice. So not a huge really anchorage thing that I've seen, but it maybe it should be. I, I really think it should. Here's one of my favorite uh, companies, the Black Gold, beautiful potting soil, all different kinds. I use their cactus mix, which is very gritty for a lot of my succulents and cacti and Christmas cactus and Easter cactus and those guys. Uh, also, I mix that with uh, more of a PD kind of soil, actually use uh, the miracle Grow cactus and palm soil. So you've got a little bit of mineral soil and you've got some organic soil mixed together and that, that seems to work well. Um, and I got that kind of recipe and idea from Mountain Crest Succulents, which I foolishly last spring joined the Mountain Crest Succulent Sedum of the month club. So <laughs> I've got quite a few sedums in containers and uh, some, some are solo and some are grouped together. Hopefully they'll look like those cool ones we were looking at and I can enter some in the fair. But uh, the cactus mix from Black Gold is really 
works well for that. But check out Mountain Crest Succulents for their soil recipe and, and some beautiful succulents. And you'll probably hate me if you go there because you're going to want everything. All right, more software. Now, I looked and looked for something like this because this is kind of what I want to segue into. Uh, as I said, we'll give you the secret of containers here in a minute. But notice anything in this one? You got some nice flowers in there. And then, hmm, is that a kale plant? Why, yes, it is. So really, years ago, not that many years ago, um, you just... I don't know, nobody ever seemed to think of it. You're mixing your ornamentals, your, your pretty flowers with your edibles. There's no reason you can't do that. And I, I think one of the first people that I had that really come to light for me was Rosalind Creasy with her edible landscaping books, of which now she has a number of them for like an Italian garden, uh, a Mexican garden, things, that, an edible garden that you can plant for that. It just it goes on and on. She has so many books, I, I couldn't believe it. I was looking at her website the other day. So uh, Rosalind Creasy, the edible landscaping. So I think that's kind of where uh, she got the ball rolling with this. And we're, we're going to look at a few more options with this. So think outside the box. You, you remember you grew up with, with uh, maybe containers like this. And, uh, but now you can stick in something to eat in there too. It was kind of hard to find a picture like that. So, okay. All right, everybody do a drum roll. There's the secret. Just remember, thriller, filler, spiller. This was such an epiphany when I had this kind of explained to me this way. I don't know where it came from. I, I work with proven winners a, a bit. Uh, just using their information and their resources. Uh, so that's where I got this, but I don't think it's necessarily theirs and, and we can share it as common knowledge. So Thriller, Filler, Spiller, pretty easy to remember. And uh, let's look at what each one of those things might mean. So here's the Thriller. So that's one of their uh, containers there. It looks like maybe three things in there. So Thriller's plants have height, uh, and a vertical element. They can be flowering or foliage or ornamental grasses. They're generally put either in the center or the back of the container. Uh, uh, if you're viewing a, the container from all sides, it would go in the center. If you're viewing it just from one side, the taller plant, the thriller would go in the back. So that's your basic gardening is tall plants in the back. Uh, some examples uh, are listed below there, and that looks like what they have planted there. And, and I'm gonna show you even better information here. You can make these exactly. So we'll look at that in a little bit. So there's Thriller, there's the filler. Once you've chosen your Thriller, your tall plants start choosing your fillers. They are more rounded or mounded. I say kind of bubbly, like cloud-like, that are gonna fill out that lower part of that pot. They make the container look full. They're usually placed in front of or around, if it's viewed from both sides, around the thriller. Should be placed midway to the edge of the container uh, with the thriller plant, and there's a reason for that. If it's in the center, they should surround the thriller. And uh, here's some more examples for you, and that's what they have planted there. How, how gorgeous is that? Simple too. Lastly, this is the spillers. They're trailing plants that hang over the edge of the planter. That's uh, the chartreuse one there is the sweet potato vine. And do you remember the golden lismachia we looked at before? That is a great spiller. So they're placed close to the edge. Uh, again, if it's going to be viewed from all sides, you want them going all the way around. If it's viewed from one side, just in the front of the container. Um, that is a, a gorgeous container right there. Uh, we'll look at a little bit more with that. So Thriller, Filler, Spiller, pretty easy. So that's, I hope that was worth the price of admission today. Anyway, uh, well, well, it was free, so that's good. <laughs> All right, so here's how we do it. So here's one called Breezy Shores. Uh, 
I actually took the uh, American Meteorological Society um, weather person course. And as uh, it was free, but you have to pay back by doing some outreach things. So I became Sunny Shores at Bayshore School. I was their uh, weatherman with the five day playground forecast and a weather quiz question. So uh, we, we went kind of rolled with this whole sunny shores thing. And we said my brother was breezy shores and uh, sandy shores. And so we got kind of silly with that. So just, sorry, I had to put that in. It makes me laugh to, to see that. So the container is called breezy shores. It's, again, it's from um, proven winners. And I'm going to show you more secrets here in a minute. So it's showing you exactly what it is. So you need one of each of those, uh, the grasses, and uh, one of each of the other things. And uh, just that's the recipe. But even better is there's a little map to show you how to do that. So uh, you, you can do this. Okay. There it is. So I had to use this one too. Patrick's Punch. So here's your Super Bell's Dream Sickle, Caliber Koa. Uh, you've got three of those. Looks like they're planted in that number one position. Uh, the verbena is the number two plant, alternating with the supertunia, uh, the number three plant there. So uh, a number of plants, which you can easily buy now. I would say most nurseries are full bore at this point. And uh, whatever type of hanging basket you might have in mind uh, with your best soil that you can afford. Not a, not a big, heavy topsoil, but a a nice container soil or potting soil. You might consider looking at ones that have the water retaining uh, little crystals in there. Uh, various companies sell those. If it's gonna be another hot, dry summer, we're gonna need something like that. But uh, I will well, help you out. Here it is. The number one thing is have fun. Provenwinners.com is where I got most of these things. And then um, uh, the one in the middle there, uh, from provenwinners.com. It's called the Gardener's Idea Book. And I did look it up there. You don't have to put all that in there. Just go to provenwinners.com, find the Gardener's Idea Book for 2020. And a single copy is $1. Get yourself one of those. Uh, sometimes I have copies from the company. I give them away at my talks, but I can't give you one over the computer here. So you'll have to get your own, but I really think it's worth getting one of those for a dollar. Uh, they, they show exactly the little maps like we were just looking at on how to plant uh, some amazing containers. So have fun with that. Gardener Supply was mentioned today too. So a uh, little more resources. Here's our my friend, Bree Arthur, somebody else I know from the Garden Writers. So I've got her book here, The Foodscape Revolution. And she is, uh, I don't know if she's millennial or whatever they all are these days, or, but she is an uh, amazing person, super energy. Uh, I saw her give a talk one time and somehow the, the wrong talk came up on the screen and no one knew. She just, she nailed it. So uh, she knows her stuff. So this is what we were talking about is mixing your edibles with your ornamentals. A lot of times uh, you have an area close to your house. Uh, where I grew up in Iowa, it was, it was always like this. You had your foundation plantings, which was right in front of your house. You had shrubs, you had, usually it was um, just some kind of evergreens and there are junipers or different things. And uh, that always filled in and there wasn't much space. But a lot of times when it's first planted, there was plenty of space in there, it's like a mulched, uh, open soil. And so she started doing this at her house, at, uh, her first house that she bought, and realizing that it could be done. She uh, kind of cautions to look at your HOA, which I don't know, it seems like that's kind of loose here in Alaska, or could be, should be, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, mixing food in there with uh, your ornamental plants. There's no reason that you can't do that. So uh, her book is great. Uh, you enjoy looking at that. Lots of ideas in there. Lots of how-tos for you. And uh, just as long as you have some sun uh, and find a little 
little space in between somewhere. I mean, she's growing rice and wheat. I, I did grow wheat in a container last year. It was beautiful. So even if you don't get the heads and harvest it, it still made a great plant. So just uh, expand your thinking a little bit. The other guy, and I didn't put him in here, uh, and there's no slide for it, is uh, Charlie Nardozzi. It's uh, N-A-R-D-O-Z-Z-I, -Z and uh, he is another garden speaker, and he does foodscaping also. So I, I don't think that the term foodscape is patented or anything, but I, I know Bree was one of the early uh, proponents of it, and then Charlie also, Charlie Nardozzi. But I think it really comes back to this lady, sorry, blurry slide, uh, Rosalind Creasy, which we had up here for a little talk with the Botanical Garden a couple years ago. As far as I know, this is like one of the first books on this concept. And like I say, she's got so many variations of it now. So there's no excuse not to include some of this in your landscaping. So uh, you can find that one on Amazon too and I get yourself a used copy or something. Um, but it's really all about having fun, getting out there, experiment. You, you know, the only thing that can go wrong is if you planted something taller in front of something smaller and it's got all shaded out. Uh, there are plant combinations that are kind of traditional and accepted and kind of like uh, planting your marigolds in your vegetable garden to repel certain insects but I don't think there's really too many other rules that you have to worry too much about. I wouldn't plant like mint plants with other herbs. I would keep like savory herbs as one element. And I, I always do a mint basket, which is why I'm mentioning that. I love growing the different mints. And even if we don't really harvest them, I could just like walk up the stairs and fluff them up and mm, smell that chocolate mint or have some beautiful rosemary or lavender or something in a container. Um, so easy to do. So I would encourage you to look into some of these ideas. Um, if you feel comfortable, visit a nursery and see what's being done. And then uh, I would give it a try myself. So uh, thriller, filler, spiller, and then go to provenwinners.com and look up that uh, gardener's idea book. I think that would be a, a good start to have some fun this summer. If you are buying plants right now, don't put them outside yet. It's They're going to burn up in the sun. That's the main thing. I did leave seedlings in flats outside last night, but they're off the ground. So they're up high because the cold air sinks. It's down low. So they were fine. They're in the shade and uh, they survived probably 25 degrees last night uh, where I live in South Anchorage. So they're fine, but don't go shopping right now, buy a bunch of stuff and put it outside. It takes five to seven days to harden them off and the sun is more harmful than the cool temperatures. So you can use this floating row cover uh, called grow cloth. Uh, it's very light. And uh, if you put them outside, I would cover them with that. Don't put them in full sun for like the first day. Give them, give them a little bit and then each day a little bit more, but it's still early, you guys. Uh, May 31st is our traditional last frost date. I, I'm pushing it, and <laughs> it looks like we might get away with it. I don't know, it could be 10 degrees <laughs> tomorrow. So if it's clear and sunny like it is, that means no cloud cover. The clouds hold in the warmth on the earth. When there's no cloud cover, that heat that was generated during the day goes back up into space. So we've got to watch the temps overnight. Generally it's above freezing though and, and we're in pretty good shape. So let's see. Stacy, you have any questions for me? I don't see any yet but people are more than welcome to uh, ask questions if they do and um, while we're waiting for those to come in I'll just pull up what our upcoming programs are going to hey. be. So you can kind of see on there this week uh, will be kind of our last week with a full program. So today's Lunch and Learn uh, will be the last for just a little bit. Uh, like Pat said, we are transitioning into doing online sales with our nursery plants. So a lot of uh, staff hours will be put towards that. Uh, we'll 
continue with our garden art weekly. So there'll be a new lesson coming up this Wednesday. And uh, those are gonna be on Trailside Gardens. I think uh, Bethany is featuring Matisse. So it's gonna be like a collage. Uh, pretty excited for that. Uh, we will be interviewing Ed Hume on Friday. And then uh, just another plug for those of you looking for a CSA option this summer, or maybe not quite ready to jump into a full-on garden at your house. Uh, we are sort of revamping our guided gardening course that we did last summer. So it'll be an, an educational CSA where you'll get a share of veggies throughout the summer. And then we will also be providing um, educational tutorials for you to learn how to do it yourself. So it looks like there are a few questions coming in. Can you see those, Pat? Yeah, plant peas in a containers, I would. Um, I, I think we're getting a jump. And they won't grow until they're ready. As long as they're not overwatered and, and rot, they should be fine. In fact, I just rigged up uh, some window boxes that are older and don't look as great. They're, they're sitting on the ground on my south side of my house. They're getting peas today. And um, as our friend Mr. Lowenfels recommends, is rolling that in that inoculant, which you can find at uh, most nurseries. So that might be a hot tip for you too. Uh, thanks for listening, you guys. Uh, another question for Stacy: Is there still a camp for five to nine-year-olds? And I don't believe we're doing the littles. What about that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so we just decided last week that we won't be doing camp uh, for our real littles. We are going to cancel camp the first three weeks of the summer to just kind of wait stuff out and see what happens. Uh, we are hoping to still do a camp for some of our older students with a reduced number of students. But again, all of that is uh, dependent on what happens in the community and things. But if you have questions about camp specifically, uh, feel free to reach out through email to me directly and uh, we can have a chat then. Okay, um, Jess says that uh, you started pick, I, it says pickling cucumbers. I said picking cucumbers. Wow, already? Uh, so pickling cucumbers from seed um, and planting, uh, any tips for that? Uh, they're in uh, the deck railing planters. Uh, they're gonna need something to climb up on. I don't know if it's a dwarf variety, uh, which I also didn't mention today. Renee's Garden has some wonderful dwarf varieties for containers of all kinds of stuff. Uh, so that's something to explore a little bit too. Just put, uh, look at container gardening or container varieties, you know, find, quite a few. Um, it's, you know, coming up from seed, you don't really have to worry about them getting hardened off because they're gonna come up just when they're ready. Uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, melon, squash, all those things are warm weather things that do better in a greenhouse. Uh, it's sure worth a try. You, you will need something for them to climb up or maybe spilling down would, would work. Um, if you can get one of those deck railing planters that have that recess that don't tip over. I like those because I've had the just the flat bottom ones blow off when we get a, a really high wind. That has happened. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, technically, we might be done with these, but if maybe there's an outpouring from, <laughs> from humanity, we could keep doing it. I, I really am having fun doing these. It's a lot of fun to be with you. Uh, I, I really like to keep the interviews going too because it's all garden related. So uh, we'll see you Friday at noon for Ed Hume of Ed Hume Seeds, a pretty amazing guy. So thank you so much. Get that Gardener's Idea book from Proven Winners and, and have fun. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody. Thank you so much.